Hello class, welcome to the next lesson in 8th grade Erica Math. Still working in module 4 and today is lesson 20, which I've called from line to linear equation. From line to linear equation. So starting with line and going to equation. So you'll need pages 241 to 253 in your module 4 workbook, plus your note pages and all your math tools. Uh, let's start like we do with vocabulary. Today I have four vocabulary terms for you. Uh, all four you've seen, excuse me, all four you've seen before, all four we've used before. I have a little bit of a hiccup, so hopefully those go away pretty soon. All four words you've seen before, all four words we've done before. Uh, we know how to use them, we know what they are. This is just a little reminder for these vocabulary. But I would still like you to write them down. I would still like you to think about them and listen as I discuss them because they are important for today's lesson and for future lessons, not just for past lessons. Uh, again, reminder at the beginning of the video, if I'm going too fast and you need to pause the video to stop and write down your notes, do that. If you need to go back and re-watch something that I explained, re-watch it. This is a recorded video, so you are in control of the speed that you watch it at. So if you need to pause or go back and re-watch, you are free to do that at any time. You control it. Well, let's talk about these vocabulary words. First one is slope-intercept form, which you've been quite familiar with over the last five lessons. Slope-intercept form is a linear equation written as y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, B is the y-intercept, and x and y are variables. So slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, and we have the slope and the y-intercept. That's where it gets its name from, slope-intercept form. The other form we've studied is standard form. Standard form is a linear equ equation written as ax plus by equals c. So we've looked at two forms of linear equations, slope-intercept and standard. In standard form, ax plus by equals c, and x and y are variables. a, b, and c are numbers. And we've been working on both of those today. We're going we're gonna to work on both of those today. We're going to see how they are related. Hopefully you've seen in, at the end of yesterday's lesson, lesson 19, that slope-intercept form and standard form can both be used for the same line. We just use our properties to move back and forth between the two of them. So slope-intercept and standard form are the same lines, they just look different. A couple other things are going to be important for today's work. Y-intercept and slope are the last two vocabulary terms. Y-intercept is the point where a graph crosses the y-axis, the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. In other words, 0 comma b, where b is the y value where the line hits. And we have the last vocabulary term for today, slope. Slope is the measure of a line's steepness or slant. And slope, we use the letter m. And to find the slope, we do the change in y divided by the change in x. Or the simple way I said it is up divided by right. You can also use the slope formula, remember, which is p2 minus r2 divided by p1 minus r1. So that's how you find slope. Changing the y, divide, how y changes divided by how x changes. Change of y divided by change in x, or up divided by right. However you want to think about it, slope just measures the steepness of a line. So we're going to have to find slope and find the y-intercept to do our work today. Which brings us to what we are doing today. Today, we will work the reverse of what we have been doing for the last few lessons. In the last few lessons, We've been looking at an equation and graphing it. I gave In lesson 18, I gave you the equation in slope-intercept form, and you graphed it. In lesson 19, I gave you the equation in standard form, and you graphed it using the intercepts. Today, we're going to go the reverse of that. Instead of giving you the equation and you give me the graph, today, 
I will give you the line, I will give you the graph, and you write the equation. So you're going to, instead of looking at an equation, make a graph, you're going to look at a graph and make the equation. So you're going to look at graphs to and write the equations for those graphs. So it's the reverse of what we have been doing. This lesson just to show you that you can go back and forth. You can graph or you can write equations. You can start either way. You can work in either direction. So very important skills to be able to look at a graph and figure out what the equation is for that graph. And the key to this work today is really slope-intercept form. We're really going to focus on slope-intercept form today because that is the easiest way to change a graph into an equation. Uh, but let's look at some examples. Let's do a couple. I'll do a couple, a couple examples with you just to show you how we do this in the reverse. But and the examples are actually going to be on a page of your book. Let's go to page 241, and you'll see I wrote examples at the top of my page 241 because that's the example because that's the page we're going to use for our examples. So let's look at what they call figure one, and they gave us a graph right here. They gave us a graph here for figure one. So what our job is to change this graph into a linear equation. Let me show you how we do that. We want to make this graph to an equation. So our goal is to start with the graph and make an equation. Well, the key to this is slope-intercept form. We want to look at slope-intercept form. So I'm going to say it's not just a graph to any equation. It's a graph to a slope-intercept form equation. So to do slope-intercept form, we need the slope m and we need the intercept b. So we need the slope m and the intercept b. Well, let's start with the intercept. Let's just start with the intercept. Well, here's the y-axis. Here's the intercept right here. What point is that? That hits the y-axis at 0, negative 3. So b the B is going to be negative 3 because that's where it crosses the Y. Very easy just to see that. B is negative 3 because that's where it crosses. Now we need to find the slope. Now remember the slope, like I told you in other lessons and in the uh, vocabulary, we can just think of the slope is up divided by right. Up divided by right. So let's start with the intercept and let's find another point where it crosses perfectly. Like right here, it does not cross at an intersection. Here, it does not cross at an inter intersection. But here, the line crosses at an intersection. So how did we get there? What path did we follow? What path up? What path right? How did we move? Well, looks like we went from negative 3 to negative 1, which means we went up 2. And we went from 0 to 3, so we went right 3 to get to here. So we started here. We went up 2, right 3 to get to another intersection. So for the slope, we went up 2, right 3, which means our slope is 2 thirds. Our slope is 2 thirds. So we have the slope, 2 thirds. We have the y-intercept is negative 3. Now we know we need the slope-intercept form. And the slope-intercept form, this is why I put it in your vocabulary so you would have it with you. Slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. So to write the equation for the line, we just substitute. We take this information and put it in slope-intercept form. 
So we get y equals m was 2 thirds, 2 thirds x plus b plus negative 3. And that is the equation. That is how you look at a graph and make an equation. You find the slope and the y-intercept, and then you put it into the, uh, the slope-intercept form. So find the, in, find the details and substitute into slope-intercept. That's what you're doing today. Let's show you again one more time using figure two. Here's figure two. Again, we want to change the graph to the slope-intercept equation. So to do this, remember, we need m for the slope, and we need b, the y-intercept. And for me, I always like to start with the y-intercept. So because it's easy to find, just find the y-axis and put a point where the line crosses. And this time, the line crosses at 0, 2, which means b this time is going to be a positive 2. So b is 2. Now, I need the slope. To find the slope, I have this intersection. Let me find another intersection. And here's another intersection right here. And remember, slope is up divided by right. So I go the, to go, I start at this intersection. For to go to the next one, I need to go down and right. So how many did I go up? Well, I did, went down instead. But you remember from other lessons that when I go down, down is just negative up. So instead of going up, I went negative up. So I went negative one, because that was one down. And I went one, two, three, four values right. So I went up negative one, because I really went down. And I went right four. So the slope is negative one fourth. That's my information. Now I'm ready to put it into y equals mx plus b form. I just substitute. And what I get is I get y equals m was negative 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth x plus b, which was 2. And that is the equation for this line. That equation matches this line. So from graph to equation is really just kind of, well, we can call it two steps. You can call it three steps. Let's call it three steps. From graph to equation, step one. Find B, the y-intercept. That's my step one. Step two, find M, the slope. Step three, substitute into y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form. Those are the three steps to how to go from graph to equation. From graph to equation is three steps. Find B, find M, substitute. In fact, you can just have those words. Find B, find M, substitute, because you know what all those mean. Find B, find M, and substitute. That's what we're doing today. Those are your examples. Now let's move on to a couple exercises, because you might be wondering, Mr. Baylor, wait, you put standard form in our vocabulary, but we haven't talked about standard form yet. Well, that's because in your lessons today, you're going to need to change it. I want the answers in slope-intercept form and in standard form. But let me show you how to do that with some exercises. So let's go to page 242 with our exercises. I believe there are six exercises today. Uh, let's go to work. So 
number one, write the equation that represents the line shown. Okay, so again, remember, step one, find the y-intercept, find b. So b equals right here. That's where it crosses the y. And that is 0, 2, which means b is 2. Next, find m. So we need to find another intersection. So here's another intersection. How do we get there? Well, we go up and we go right. We go up, we go right. We went up, looks like we went up three values, and we went right one. So we went right up three, right one, which means m is three over one, which it means m is three. And so we did step one, find the y-intercept. Step two, find the slope. Step three, substitute. So we get y equals, remember it's mx plus b, so we get y equals three, well, let me write the y equals mx plus b, so our equation is going to be y equals 3x plus 2, and that is the answer to the first part. Pretty simple once you see, once you know how to do it. If you understand y-intercept and you understand slope and you know the slope-intercept form, this work is simple. But there's the another tool we need to do. Use the properties of equality to change the equation from slope-intercept form to standard form. So we need to change. We need. I want both. I, I we found slope-intercept. The book also wants standard form. But they. But the instructions told us how to do that. We use the properties of equality. We use the properties of equality. So what we want is we want to go from y equals mx plus b. We want to turn that into ax plus by equals c. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to happen. Now, important here, a is not negative. a is not negative. So that means the x coefficient is not negative. So let's look at this. y equals 3x plus 2, and this, the x coefficient, has to stay positive, which means it's already positive. We cannot move it. So let's start with what we have. y equals 3x plus 2. And we're going to use our properties of equality. Well, first, I'm I want this is, let's label everything a little bit right here. We have AX, we have BY, and we have C. AX, BY, and C to match the uh, standard form. This is slope intercept to match it. We know this is AX, this is BY, this is C. Well, we want C by itself and X and Y together, but we want A to be positive. So A is already positive. A is already positive. So A does not move. The 3x does not move because it's already positive. So that means we have to move the y over here and the 2 over here. Let's start with the 2. Let's do minus 2 on both sides. That's the subtraction POE, property of equality. That gives us y minus 2 equals 3x. Well, remember I want the y with the x. So I'm going to do minus y on both sides. Again, that's the subtraction property of equality. So that gives me negative 2 equals 3x minus y. And that is standard form. Because if you look at it again, we have c, we have ax, and we have by. Just this time, the b is a negative 1. So we're just going to write it as 3x minus y equals negative 2. That is standard form. So this equate, this, it's the same line. The line did not change. But we have two equations for the line. We have the slope-intercept equation, 
and we have the standard form equation. All I did was I used my properties to make this look like this. It's the same equation, it just looks different. Same equation, same line, just looking different. Same line, same equation, just looking different. It's like when you change your clothes. You're still the same person, you're just wearing a different outfit. So this, it's the line is wearing its slope intercept clothes. This, it's wearing its standard clothes. You just had to use your properties to move it. And so when you use your properties, remember it needs to look like this, and A is not negative. That's why the 3x never moved. The 3x, we did not move it, we did not subtract it, because it was already positive. Let me do another example for you. Let's do the exercise two together, and then I might want you to try exercise three on your own, but we'll see. So same instructions, write the equation that represents the line shown. So uh, step one, just like before, find B. Let's just find the equation. This time we want the equation y equals mx plus b. So we find b. This time it crosses right here, which is 0 and y is negative 1, which means b is negative 1. Then we need to find the slope, m. So here's one intersection at the intercept. Let's keep going until we get to another intersection, and we have to go right here. Well, how did we go there? We went, followed that road down and that road right. And remember, M is up and right, but we went down, so we're gonna go negative up. So we went negative two up, and we went right three. So M is negative two thirds. M is negative two thirds. So step one, Find the intercept. Step two, find the slope. Step three, substitute into this form. So we get y equals m, which is negative two thirds, x plus b, which is negative one. That is our equation for the line in slope intercept form. But you'll see right here. We don't want slope, we want slope intercept form. We also want standard form. And standard form is ax plus by equals c, and a is not negative. A is not negative. So let's start with our slope intercept form. We have y equals negative two thirds x plus negative one. And already, if we look at stand form, we say, okay, this is AX, BY, C. Already you see a problem here because A is supposed to be not negative. A has to be positive, but right here, A is negative. So how do we make it positive? Well, we have to move it to the other side. So we're going to do plus two-thirds X to that side and plus two-thirds X on that side because that is the addition property of equality. I add it to both sides. Because what happens is negative 2 thirds x plus 2 thirds x, remember, turns into a 0. So what I get, I get 2 thirds x plus y on the left, and 0 plus negative 1 is just negative 1 on the right. And look at that. that is standard form. I just had to move the x to the other side and I get ax plus b, which is one, one y, so by, ax plus by equals c. c is negative one. That's how that works. a is, oh, I'm sorry, no, oh, I missed, I messed up, I messed up. I forgot one, I forgot one piece. I forgot one thing, and it's all my fault. A, B, and C are integers. A, B, and C are integers, which means they are whole numbers, which means no fractions. So I messed this up. Let's fix this, because 2 thirds is a fraction, cannot be a fraction. So 
standard form rules. Let me write these down because I should have written I should have written these down all already. But let's write them down right here so you have them. Standard form rules. First rule, standard form is AX plus BY equals C. Rule two, A is positive. A has to be positive. Rule three, whole numbers or integers only. Integers means whole numbers. So these are your standard form rules. Write them down on your page so you have them. Because otherwise, if you don't write them down, you're going to do what I did and circle your answer before you're ready. I was not ready to circle my answer. That I messed up. I need to change this to whole numbers. So how do I change two-thirds into a whole number? Well, I multiply by the denominator. I just multiply by three. But I need to multiply everything by three. Every, because if I change one piece, I need to change everything by three. That's the multiplication property of equality. So now I get 3 times 2 thirds, which is 2, 2x. Two 3 times 1y is 3y. And 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Now that's my answer. That is standard form because it hits all my rules. It's all my rules. It looks like this, ax plus by equals c. A is positive, in this case it's 2, and I only have integers. I only have whole numbers. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Sorry I made a mistake and circled before we were ready. I forgot about the integer rule, but I wrote them down now so I can remember. So, standard form rules. So, well, let's recap everything. First step, look at the line and find the intercept, find the slope to write slope intercept. Slope intercept form, easy to find. You just have to look. Then to go from slope intercept and make standard form, you, fought, you use your properties. Use your properties to make standard form, and standard form follows these three rules. So three steps to make slope intercept. Find intercept, find slope, substitute. And then three rules for standard and use your properties to get there. Let me do another uh, exercise with you. Let me do number three just be so that we make sure you get it. If you think you know it, go ahead and work it. Go ahead and work ahead. You can pause the video if you know what you're doing and you think you're and you're confident. Pause the video. And then come back and start the video to check your work for exercise three when you're done. But I'm going to keep working ahead. Uh, number three, find the equation, which I'm going to I'm going to start with slope intercept y equals mx plus b. And then I'm going to change it to standard form. So, but let's just focus on y equals mx plus b right now. Step one, I need b. Where does it cross the y? It crosses right here. And that's at 0, negative 4, so b is negative 4. Step 2, slope. Find the next intersection. And the next intersection, not there, not there, not there, not there. Oh, that's an intersection right there. So how do I go from one to the other? How do I get there? Well, it looks like I went down 1 and right five. But remember, slope is up and right. So the right five still works. But I did not go up, I went down. So that's going to be negative up. So up a negative one. So that means my slope is negative one over five, negative one fifth. So to make the equation, step one, find the intercept. Step two, find the slope. Step three, substitute. So I get y equals negative one-fifth is m, x plus b, which is negative four. 
And that is my equation in slope intercept form. Now I need standard form. I need standard form. So I'm going to use my properties to change from this to standard form. So let's start with slope intercept. And I need to change it. Now remember our rules for a standard form. Our rules. Ax plus by equals c. A is positive, whole numbers only. So looking at this, I can see, okay, I do not have whole numbers. So maybe we can do that first. How do I change everything to a whole number? Well, this is one fifth. So if I multiply by five, the, the five and the five will cancel because I'm multiplying by five. But I also need to do times five to this side. That's the multiplication property of equality. So let's multiply everything by five. That gives me five y equals uh, oh negative one fifth times five is negative one x plus negative four times five is negative twenty. So now I only have whole numbers. That's good. Next thing. A is positive. Well, in this one, remember, A is next to the X, negative 1. Uh-oh, A has to be positive. I cannot have a negative X. So to fix that, I'm going to move the X over to this side. So I'm going to do plus 1X here. That will make the X not, uh, not negative anymore. Well, I can also... Well, A is positive or zero. It could be that. Let me add that to my rule. There we go. Okay. Add X to both sides. That's the addition property of equality. I have to add plus 1X over here. If I do that, I get X plus 5Y equals, remember this turned into zero, equals negative 20. Following my properties, I use the multiplication property of equality to make everything a whole number, an integer. And I use the addition property of equality to stop x being negative because I don't like negative x. So let's check my rules. I have x plus 5y equals negative 20. That follows ax plus by equals c. a is 1, x is x, b is 5, y is y, and c is negative 20. So it follows the pattern. A has to be positive or zero. A is positive, so we're good. And I only have whole numbers. So this is standard form. Standard form. Done. Let's recap what we did. We looked at the graph. We found the y-intercept. We found the slope. We made slope-intercept form. Then we used our properties to change slope intercept into standard form. And we made sure that we matched our standard form rules that we wrote down on page 242. Let's, uh, well, give you the option. I'm gonna work ahead and do number four. If you're feeling confident, what I'd like you to do right now is try number four yourself and then come back and watch my solution. So pause the video, try number four, and then unpause the video when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so now I'm gonna do number four to see if you succeeded and did it correctly. So let's look at number four. First, write the equation, and I'm going to start with slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. So I need step one to find B, step two, find M. Find B crosses right here. Y, it hits right here. Oh, and that hits at zero comma zero. So B is just zero. For slope, I find the next intersection. Oh, here's an intersection right here. Well, that goes up one and right one. So M is up one, right one, which is one over one, which means M is one. 
So I substitute y equals m 1x plus b, which is 0. Simplify that, y equals x. y equals x is the equation for that line. y equals x is the equation for that line. Good enough. But now, again, that's in slope-intercept form. We want it in standard form. So let's start with slope intercept and let's look at our rules for standard form that I wrote down on page 242. Standard form has to look like this. A has to be positive or zero and we only have whole numbers. Well, number three, we only have whole numbers. We only have one. So one Y equals one X. So check for three. A is positive or zero. Well, A is next to X, so hey, look, that's one X and one is positive. So number three, good. Number two, good. The only thing we need to fix is number one. We need the X and the Ys on the same side. But because X has to stay positive, we're gonna move the Y. We're gonna do minus Y on both sides. That is the subtraction property of equality. That gives us zero equals X minus Y. And that is standard form. Let's, let's, let's switch it around. Zero equals X minus Y is the same as X minus Y equals zero. Let's check it real quick. I'm gonna tell you that standard form, but we all know I can make mistakes, so let's check it. Do we get AX plus BY equals C? Well. AX, A is 1, X is X, BY, B is negative 1, Y is Y, and C is 0. Number 1, check. A has to be positive or 0. Well, we have 1X, that's positive. 2, check. 3, whole numbers only. Well, 1, negative 1, and 0 are integers. So they're not fractions. They're not decimals. So check, integers. So the right form, A is not negative, and we only have integers, that is standard form. So that is the answer to number four. Number four, in slope, this line in slope-intercept form looks like this, and this line in standard form looks like that. Hopefully you're getting a pretty good idea about how to do these now. I think we have a couple more exercises to practice. So there's exercise five. I think five and six are the last two exercises. Yes, they are. So what we're going to do right now is I would like you again, pause the video, try number five on your own, and then unpause the video when you are ready to check. And here we go. I'm going to show you my answer for number five, and hopefully you did the work already and you're ready to check your work. Write the equation for this line, and we're going to start with slope intercept, y equals mx plus b. So we need b and we need m. Let's do step one, find the y-intercept first. So y-axis, where does the line hit? It's right here, and that is 0, 0,5, so b is 5. For the slope, we need to find another intersection. So it's right here. That's another intersection. How did we get there? Well, it looks like we went up one and right four. And because slope is up divided by right, we went up one, right four. So the slope is one fourth. Step one, intercept. Step two, slope. Step three, substitute. Y equals M, one fourth, X plus B, five. And that is this line in slope intercept form is that equation. But we're not done yet because you know they want you to change slope intercept into standard form. So again, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna start with the slope intercept equation, y equals one fourth x plus five. And let's look at our standard form rules and make sure we're following everything. Well, already I see a problem because 
three whole numbers, integers only. One fourth is a fraction, that's not an integer. So I need to multiply by four to make the fraction go away. And I do multiply by four on this side and four on this side. That's the multiplication property of equality. After I do that, I get 4y equals x because 1 fourth times 4 is just 1. So 1x one plus 5 times 4, which is 20. Good enough. So now, step three, check. I only have integers. Everything is a whole number. Number two, a is positive. Well, there we go. X has a pot is it's 1x and 1 is positive, so it's not negative. So step three, so part three, check. Rule three, check. Rule two, check. I just have to make it look like ax plus by equals c. But I want to keep x positive, which means I cannot move it. I'm going to move the y and the 20 instead. Let's start with the 20. Do minus 20 to both sides. That's the subtraction property of equality. So I get 4y minus 20 equals x, but I'm not there yet. I want to get to ax plus by. I want x and the y on the same side. So let's do minus 4y on this side and minus 4y on that side. That's the subtraction property of equality again. I get negative 20 equals x minus 4y. Well, x minus 4y is the same as x minus 4y equals negative 20. That is my answer. Let me double check again. Let me make it sure it follows all my standard form rules. Are there integers only? I have a 1, a negative 4, and a negative 20. All of them are integers. Is a positive? Well, a is a positive 1. So check. Check 3, check 2. Does it look like ax plus by equals c? Well, ax, 1x, check. Negative 4y, b, so a is 1, x is x, b is negative 4, y is y, and c is negative 20. Check, check, check. That is in standard form. So, again, this line right here. Slope intercept form, we find the intercept, we find the slope, we substitute this line, slope intercept form matches. Then we use our properties to change slope intercept into standard. Just use your properties, look at your standard form rules, and make sure they match. Make sure everything checks. Then you have two equations for one line. They meet, these are both for the same line. The line does not change. The equation just look a little bit different. Hopefully you got both of those, but you have one more chance to try this on your own. Let's look at exercise six. Pause the video, try to do exercise six on your own right now. Unpause when you're ready for me to show you my answers and check your work. Okay, if you took the time to do number six, you should be you should have unpaused the video right now. Ready to check your answers with mine. So number six, write the equation in slope-intercept form. So we want y equals mx plus b. To get that, we need step one, find b, the y-intercept. Step two, find m, the slope. So let's find the y-intercept first. Here's y. Where does the line hit? It's right here. And reading the graph. That is 0, comma, negative 7, so b is negative 7. Well, let's check the slope. Let's try to find another line. Okay, well, here's a tough one. We need to find another intersection. So it intersects exactly there, but that's off, that's off, that's off. Well, where can we find where it crosses at, a, at integers, at whole numbers? We have to go all the way up here. We have to go all the way up here to find another place where it crosses. I hope you went that far. Let's go here. Let's figure out how to move from one point to the another point. We make our little shape to move from one to the other. Well, how do we get there? We went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
down and we went one, two, three, four, five right. Eight and five. But remember, slope is up and right. We did go five right, so right five. But we did not go up. What we did is we went down, which is negative up. So we went up negative eight. So our slope is negative eight over five. So step one, we found the intercept. Step two, we found the slope. Now we substitute y equals m negative 8 fifths x plus b negative 7. And that, this line written in slope intercept is that right there. Perfectly done. Hopefully you got the same one. But we're not done yet because the book also wants slope intercept to be, to be changed into standard form. So let's start with slope intercept. And we're going to use our properties to make standard. And I am, again, going to put my standard form rules right next to me so that I make sure everything matches. So let's check these rules. Uh, number three, whole number integers only. Uh-oh, eight fifth, negative 8 fifths is a fraction, not an integer. So I need to fix that. How do I fix that? I'm going to multiply everything by 5. Oh. Negative 8 fifths x plus negative 7. Forgot the x. I'm going to multiply by 5. And the multiplication property of equality tells me I need to multiply by 5 on that side also. Multiplying by 5, I get 5y equals negative 8x because the 5 and the 5 cancel. Negative 7 times 5 is negative 35. There we go. So I get 5y equals negative 8x plus negative 35. Now check for rule three, integers only. All of five, negative eight, and negative 35 are all integers. I'm good. What about rule two? A has to be positive or zero. A is not allowed to be negative. Well, right here, A is negative eight. I need to fix that. So negative eight on this side, I make it go away by adding 8x. But the addition property of equality tells me I need to do plus 8x on this side also. So because now this turns into 0, which is good because it's not negative anymore. So I get 8x on this. On the left, I get 8x plus 5y equals, that goes away, negative 35. Well, let me check my rules. Part 3. Integers only. I have 8, 5, and negative 35. Rule 3 is a check. No more fractions. Rule 2, A is positive or 0, which in other words, A is not negative. Well, A is 8, so that's not negative. So rule 2 is a check. And rule 1, does it look like 8, AX plus BY equals C? Well, A is 8, X is X, 5 is B, Y is Y, negative 35 is C. Check, check, check. All three rules match. This is standard form. Hopefully you saw how that worked. Hopefully you got the same answers I did. This line in slope intercept is that equation. And this line in standard form is that equation. That's how we do it. If you need to rewatch any of that, rewatch it. If you need more advice from me, go ahead and reach out and ask. But let's talk about the rest of the lesson you're going to work on independently. Uh, page 245 is the lesson summary telling you uh, kind of the three steps right here. Uh, remember it says, so step one, find B is step one. M, finding M is step two. Substitute is step three. And then it's telling you right here, use your properties to make standard form. And remember the rules for standard form. It has to look like that. A, B, and C have to be integers. And A cannot be negative. So those are the big three things. Those are the big ideas of today. 
the first part of your problem, step one, find B, step two, find M, step three, substitute. Then you use properties to make standard form and remember the three rules of standard form. There, so the steps are in your lesson summary. You're in your three rules for standard form are in your lesson summary. Or again, you can look at the three rules that we wrote on page 241 in your notes and the rules, I mean the three steps on page 241 to make an equation from a graph and then the three rules on page 242 for standard form. So you have all that information in your notes. It's also on your lesson summary. Let's look at what you're gonna be working on. Page 247 is your exit ticket, which you're gonna do last. So let's shuffle that to the back and your exit ticket is actually two pages. So take both of them, put them to the back. Homework helper, if you want another couple examples of what you're doing today, look at the homework helper on page 249 and page 250. But when, if you think you have an understanding of what you're supposed to be doing, your problem set starts on page 251, and it's exactly the same thing. You're going to write an equation in slope-intercept and then change it to standard for number one. Number two, write equation in slope-intercept, change it to standard. Number three, write the equation in slope-intercept, change it to standard. Number four, write in slope-intercept, change to standard. Number five, guess what? Write in slope-intercept, change to standard. Number six, again, slope-intercept and standard form. Look at the examples we did together. Look at the exercise we did together. Look at the homework helper if you need to. If you're still having trouble, remember my answers to the problem set are on the Google Classroom assignment. So you can check your answers with mine and see if you're doing it right or if you need to ask for help. And if you need to ask for help, please ask for my help. I want to help you. But after you do the problem set and after you check your answers, if you, are, if you know what you're doing, then you're ready to do the exit ticket, which is back on page 247. And it's gonna be the same thing. Number one, write the equation in slope-intercept form. Number two, change it to standard form. And number three, write the equation for this line in slope-intercept. And number four, change it to make the standard form for that line. So it's the same thing as we did in the ex examples, same thing as we did in the exercises. Problem set is the same strategy and exit ticket is the same strategy. You just have to try your best, check your work, ask for help when you need it. Remember to work hard, have fun, don't give up, persevere. You can do it. Ask for help if you need it. But make sure, try to enjoy yourself. Don't give up. And I will see you for the next lesson.